There is not the one perfect setting on the GoPro Hero 12 that is best for all situations. Today I'm going to explain what changes you need to make depending on the situation to get the best possible results. This video is divided into 10 parts because I will discuss the 10 most important settings. Before we take a closer look at the video settings, you should make sure that the controls are set to Pro. Today we will focus exclusively on the best video quality. There will be separate tutorials on the photo and time-lapse mode. The first setting we need to discuss is the video profile. There is the choice between standard, HDR and lock. The HDR mode allows for a higher dynamic range. When the lighting conditions are difficult, that is, when there are very dark and very bright areas in the same image, the bright areas in the image often burn out. No more details are visible in the bright areas. To prevent this, you can use the HDR mode. In this mode, images with different exposure settings are taken and stitched together. Of course, this requires a lot of processing power. That's why this mode also has limitations. A number of settings for the frame rates and the field of view are not available. It also gives the shot that sometimes strange and artificial HDR look. Personally, I'm not a big fan of it, but depending on the situation, the mode can be very useful. For example, if you're riding your bike through the forest and the sky could easily burn out. The lock profile serves a similar purpose. It also also increases the dynamic range and especially the highlights that is the very bright areas in the image are better protected than in standard mode. But the technique behind it is different and in lock mode the resulting image has significantly less contrast and saturation. This profile is therefore particularly suitable for color grading. In other words, if you want to edit and change the colors of the shot yourself. On the other hand, the flat look means that you are forced to color grade every shot. You can't use the shot without editing it, unlike with the HDR profile. To make color grading easier, GoPro offers a lot for download. You should also use it to get correct results. As you can see, the lock mode, while very useful, is more for advanced users who edit all their footage. You should also know that neither the HDR nor the lock profile are particularly well suited for shooting in low light conditions. The lock profile does not appear in the default settings. To activate it, you have to set the bitrate to high and the bit depth to 10 bit in the main menu under video. Only then you can activate the lock profile. I will explain these two settings in more detail later. For now, I'll continue with the standard profile. And here we need to choose the second important setting, the aspect ratio. The default aspect ratio for a horizontal video is 16 to 9. But if you want to shoot a video for social media, a vertical video, you can also choose 9 to 16 here. But be careful, you should know a few things about this. To shoot a vertical video in portrait mode, you can also simply turn your GoPro sideways and then start recording. The Hero 12 has a sensor with an 827 format, which is almost square, but not completely square. So if you hold your GoPro horizontally, but select a vertical format of 9 to 16, you can take a vertical video. But the field of view will not be quite as big as if you turn the GoPro sideways and shoot in the 16 to 9 setting. So for vertical videos, I would rather recommend turning the camera sideways. In 4 to 3, and especially in the 8 to 7 setting, a larger part of the image sensor is used. This is actually a good thing, because it increases the field of view at the top and bottom. You can see more of the sky or the handlebar bars of your bike for example. However, this also leads to black bars on the left and right sides. If you want to get the classic 16 to 9 video format as a result of your recording, you still have to crop the image in post, but then you have more room to choose the right framing. This is especially the case with 8 to 7 shots which are therefore particularly suitable for POV shots. Also, since the image is almost square, you can crop the same shot vertically and then use it for social media. But there are drawbacks to 8 to 7 as well. Not only do you have to crop each shot, there are also limitations to the choice of the frame rate or the stabilization. So 8 to 7 is a cool option for POV shots, but not always the best solution. For now, I use the default setting of 16 to 9. Choosing the right resolution is a bit easier. For the best possible results, you should almost always choose 5.3K. It's only at this resolution that the Hero 12 produces truly high resolution detailed and beautiful shots. But again, there are two exceptions. For slow motion shots, you'll need to reduce the resolution to 4K. And 4K is also the better solution in low light, because in 5.3K, you get a lot of noise when it's dark, so 4K is the better solution in low light. For the frame rate, the more frames per second, the smoother the recording looks. You'll also need a higher frame rate if you want to create a slow motion shot. A particularly low frame rate of 24 or 25 frames per second may not look as smooth, but it has advantages in low light conditions 
because it allows you to capture more light. Also, such a low frame rate creates a look that is considered particularly cinematic, since most professional movies are shot at this frame rate. Personally, I think that shooting with an action camera is mostly not about achieving a cinematic look. Rather, you want to capture your nature experience as realistically and naturally as possible. I would therefore rather recommend a frame rate of 30 or even 60 frames per second on the GoPro, especially for motovlogging, underwater or shooting sports. 60 frames per second is best. By the way, frame rates like 25 or 50 frames per second are meant for the PAL region, which is most countries outside the US and Canada. To enable them, you need to set anti-flicker to 50 Hz in the settings under video. For the best slow motion recordings, I recommend you use 4K and 120 frames per second. You can then slow the shot down to 20 or 25 percent. It looks really great and very spectacular. For 240 frames per second, you have to reduce the resolution to 2.7K. I would only do that if you really need it, because the result doesn't look that good. In summary, use 30 or 60 frames per second for a natural look, 24 or 25 frames per second for a more cinematic look or in low light, and 120 frames per second for slow motion. On the lens, you can set the field of view. You have the choice between wide, linear, linear with horizon lock, super view and hyper view. Wide is the standard field of view of the GoPro. However, the fisher lens of the GoPro creates strong distortions at the edges. In the case of linear, the fisher effect is removed. The image has to be cropped for this, but the distortions are reduced. If you select linear with horizon lock, the camera will also keep the horizon straight to prevent tilted shots, no matter how much you turn your GoPro. Linear with horizon lock also leads to an improved stabilization. With super view, the field of view is extended at the top and bottom. For this, a 4 to 3 aspect ratio shot is taken and then stretched from the camera on the left and right to the outer side. This results in very strong distortions at the left and right edges, but you get a larger field of view at the top and bottom. The same same basically applies to hyperview, except that here the field of view is even bigger and the distortions also increase. Superview and hyperview are, in my opinion, very interesting options for POV shots. I use Superview very often. With Hyperview, the distortions are a bit too strong for me. When I'm not taking POV shots, I usually use the standard field of view white. I often use the camera for sports or travel. In these cases, I consider the particularly wide field of view of the GoPro to be an advantage. If distortions really bother me with a certain shot, they can also be removed in post. For example, this can also be done very easily in the GoPro Quick App. If you don't like the GoPro Fisher look in general, I would recommend Linear with Horizon lock. That way you can easily create very steady and cinematic shots without distortion. Under HyperSmooth you can set the type of stabilization. You have the choice between on and auto boost. On is the standard HyperSmooth stabilization of the GoPro and it works very well. Only with very strong and intense movements this stabilization is not sufficient. For a better stabilization the image must be cropped more and for these cases there is auto boost. In the case of auto boost the image is cropped and the stabilization is improved only when there is actually strong movement during the shot. That is, when you activate auto boost, initially the standard stabilization is active. Then, when you're moving and there's heavy shaking, the boost mode is automatically activated and the image is cropped. But the transition is smooth, so it's hardly noticeable. It's a very cool option that you should enable if you think there might be severe camera shake during the course of the shot. Personally, I rarely need it, so I usually leave HyperSmooth set to on. The capture settings are not about image quality. Here you can, for example, schedule a shot and limit the duration of your recording, meaning that the recording will automatically stop after a certain amount of time. I don't use these two features in video mode. They are more useful for automatically scheduling the capture of a sunrise in time-lapse mode, for example. Hindsight, on the other hand, can be a very interesting feature. If you enable hindsight and then start recording, your video clip will also include the 15 or 30 seconds before you pressed the shutter button. This way, you can avoid missing an important moment and pressing the shutter button too late, for example when fishing. Of course, this is only possible because by activating hindsight, the camera starts recording continuously. This obviously consumes a lot of energy and is only useful when you really need it. With the timer, you can delay the start of a recording by 3 or 10 seconds, for example if you want to film yourself. And with zoom, you can of course zoom in, which I wouldn't recommend most of the time. It's a digital zoom, which will reduce the image quality of your recording. The Protune settings are setting options meant for advanced users, but to get the best possible image quality with the Hero 12, we need to make a few changes here as well. Under shutter, you can set exposure time manually. This only makes sense if you are using ND filters or maybe in low light. By default, I use the automatic. With exposure value compensation, 
you can set whether the camera's automatic should expose a little darker or brighter. It makes sense to set a slightly negative value of minus 0.5 for example. This prevents the camera from overexposing bright areas in the image. In post, it is easy to brighten up shadows. However, areas that are too bright and burnt out cannot be saved. This is about how cool or warm the image looks. Depending on the type of light, the white balance changes. The goal should always be that white actually looks white. The automatic of the GoPro works very well here, so I leave this setting on auto. If you take a longer shot, for example when making a longer ride with the bike, you can also set the white balance manually. This prevents the camera from changing the white balance during the recording and ruining the shot. For daylight, for example, a value of approximately 5000 or 5500 is recommended. The ISO value in simple terms defines how sensitively the camera reacts to incident light. The higher this value, the brighter the image. At the same time, a higher ISO value results in disturbing image noise. This image noise is very strongly visible, especially from 800 ISO. Therefore, I would set ISO minimum to 100 and ISO maximum to 400. As already mentioned, in 4K, the Hero 12 achieves better results in low light. In 4K, you can also use ISO 800 if necessary. However, you should not expect miracles here either. The GoPro was simply not made for low light situations. You should take this into account when shooting. Sharpness is a very important setting for me. High sharpness doesn't mean more detail, rather the camera adds digital sharpness to the shot to artificially enhance the image. However, the image doesn't look very cinematic and the shot doesn't get a high quality look. I use a sharpness of low here. This makes the image look very soft. I then add some sharpness in post. If you don't plan to edit your footage, I would use medium here. There are three color profiles to choose from under color. Natural differs from vibrant mainly in that it has less saturation. It also has slightly more natural colors. With flat, you get a very flat and unsaturated image. Especially in the highlights, a little more detail is preserved. Also, flat is a good choice if you want to edit the colors of your shot. However, it has been shown that with flat, details can also be lost due to the compression in very low contrast areas of the image. For this reason, I prefer the color profile natural on the Hero 12. Here, you could have the camera create additional wave files to better edit the sound. I set raw audio to off. The GoPro has three microphones. Depending on the wind situation, one or the other microphone could be deactivated to reduce the wind noise. You can turn this feature on or off here. I leave the setting at auto. Now we've got the Hero 12 almost perfectly set up to take the best shots possible. However, there are still a few things you should pay attention to. When you swipe down from the top, you open the dashboard. Here you can quickly activate a few important features. You should pay particular attention to the two icons at the bottom left. Here you can set what is displayed on your front screen. Unfortunately, the front screen does not have a 16 to 9 format. If you want to use the whole screen, you have to activate the option on the right. But I wouldn't recommend it, because then a crop of the image is displayed and you get a wrong impression of the real framing. So activate the second option from the right to show the correct preview image. The image will be smaller, but you will be able to better judge the framing. What also often happens is that when you use your GoPro on a pole or other mount, that you don't hold it straight when you start shooting and then accidentally start a shot in portrait mode. This can be annoying and unfortunately happens a lot. To prevent this, you can block the orientation here. This can be very useful. And we should also take a look at a few settings in the preferences menu. To do that, I swipe left and tap on preferences and then video. All three settings here we've already seen today. If you want to get the best possible results with your GoPro, you should always set the bitrate to high. This is the only way to ensure that more image data is transferred and stored. However, a high bitrate also has disadvantages it leads to significantly larger files. In addition, the difference can only be seen clearly in a few cases. So if you are on a longer vacation and want to save storage space, you can do without it. A bit depth of 10 bit is only needed if you want to edit the colors of your shot. In these cases, you should also use a color profile of flat or even lock. As you could see, the best settings depend on the situation and your personal needs. Once you have found the best settings for your Hero 12, you should create a new preset so that you don't have to adjust the settings every time. To do this in the presets menu, simply tap on the plus, video and select the correct settings here again and then a suitable name. That was quite a lot of information now, so let us briefly recap. 
Resolution and frame rate 5.3K for optimal quality, 24 frames per second for a cinematic look, 30 if you prefer a smoother look, 60 frames per second for underwater shots, moto vlogging, or other sports POV shots, 4K for better image quality, low light, and 4K 120 for great slow motion, digital lens or field of view wide, and super view for POV shots, and for Protune, exposure value compensation minus 0.5, ISO minimum 100, ISO maximum 400, sharpness low or medium if you don't want to edit your videos. Color natural, vibrant if you prefer a more saturated look. And with that we have optimally set up our GoPro. If you don't have a lot of experience with GoPros, I also recommend you watch the video I made on the most common GoPro beginner mistakes. You'll be surprised. I'll also put a list of my best tutorials in the video description, in case you want to learn even more about your GoPro. I wish you much fun with your GoPro. If this video was interesting for you, give me a like as feedback. And if you want to support this channel, you can also use the link in the video description and buy me a coffee. There will be more videos about the Hero 12, so stay tuned and until next time!